Have you ever had slow data? Well, I've got some, and it's completely impractical. Poor data performance can drive users away from the reports and dashboards that you create. It can also cause frustration or even lead to poor user adoption when you're trying to roll out a culture of information-based decision-making. Also, poor data can make it absolutely impossible to do any ad hoc analysis or data discovery activities. Today, I'll show you the kind of staggering improvements that you'll see by moving to an in-memory data cube in Dundas BI. Let's do it. I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. If you go over to the US Department of Education, you can download their college scorecard, which has data on colleges, students, debts, completion, debt repayment, earnings, you name it. I've loaded one of their data sets, which simply came in the form of a large 55 meg CSV file. Since it's a flat file, there's naturally no optimization included, and it's slow to query. There's many reasons why you can have slow data sources, and the point of this isn't to rag on the flat files. We see slow data all the time. Databases can be slow due to lack of indexing, lack of resources, simply too many values to crunch, you name it. This is a great test to show you what it's like to work with many of these scenarios. All in all, there's something in the neighborhood of 210,000 rows, not huge, but let's see what happens. I'm going to create a simple visual where we can see all the different courses and the average level of credentials for each program. Let's start by dropping our field of study onto the dashboard. Also, I want to be very clear that Dundas BI is basically just sitting here waiting for the data re to return. It's not the case of BI tool being slow. We're simply doing direct querying, and Dundas BI has no impact on the performance. And here's what we get. I'll stick a timer on the screen so that we can see how long this is going to take. So yeah, that was fun. It's fairly clear that this is just query time for a single metric. Imagine what would happen if you had a dashboard full of content. Maybe it would be a good coffee break dashboard, but it would be really painful to use. You can also rule out quick data discovery and ad hoc decision making, as that process would be way too slow to throw many scenarios quickly at the data to see what's going to happen. We need better performance. Dundas BI is able to figuratively make this scream by building an in-memory data cube. We use a structure called a hypergraph, and the results can come back pretty much instantaneous because the values are sitting in RAM. So let's give this a go. I'm going to start by creating a data cube. Now once you're here, we can drag our source data as an input. Now you can apply necessary transformations here, do cleanup, augmentation, but in this case, all I need to do is bring it in. Whatever you have in this process result after any processing that you ask it to do is what's going to be stored in memory. Now, before I put this into memory, I have a really large tip that I want to give you. One thing that I'd caution you on is to think about these structures more like high-performance views rather than databases. We're basically building a high-performance model, and we're not simply copying the data into a faster database. Now, why do I say this? If you have 10 gigs of data in a traditional database, that's the size. But in an in-memory cube, we're essentially readying up all the possible combinations of the data, and the more you add, the larger it can get. So depending on what you tell the system to do, these models can potentially take a lot of RAM. I've seen people build data cubes that use up as much as 64 gigs of RAM just for that data model. However, I've been blessed with IT to have a server containing 9 gigs of RAM in total, and I've got to watch what I do here. And you might find yourself in the same boat. So think of the total size of the data cube this way. Every hierarchy that you wish to support is essentially a multiplier to the final graph that's going to be stored in memory. The biggest consideration that you should have is the number of unique members in each hierarchy that we're supporting. Here's an example. We have five hierarchies, country, continent, product, date, and ID. 
Think of each of these as a multiplier to the total size of that data cube, like I said. Starting with country, let's say we have 95 countries that we're selling to. That's 95 members here. Multiply that by the continents that we're supporting, in this case, seven. Then multiply that by two products, not a big deal. And then five years worth of data stored at the date level. All of these are dates. Then we have a unique ID containing 200,000 unique members. As you can see, the ID has a significant impact on the size of our in-memory model due to the number of unique members here. If we wanted to keep our server resources down, removing this unique ID would be the way to go. In this case, I'd probably be asking myself, do my users really care about reporting on the ID? And in most cases, I'd guess not. The next hierarchy, which would have the largest impact, is the date field. And it's not nearly as impactful as the 200,000 unique IDs, but it is the next largest. There is also one cool trick that you can do to help with dates uh, with resource requirement, and that's to trim the data. If you have 200,000 data points, each being stored at the second level, you could potentially have another 200,000 unique members, and that would have a significant impact. But what if you're only reporting at the day or month level? Well, you can actually significantly remove the impact on your RAM by trimming this data down so that it doesn't have that additional information like seconds or days. This would take the previous example north of 200,000 members down to maybe only 60, which is really a big deal. So in short, if you want to save out on system resources, lean towards having smaller data cubes with less hierarchies and just have more data cubes rather than trying to build one big one that has everything because it is a multiplier effect. Again, just to be clear, I'm only talking about this because you may have server resource constraints and you might want to be mindful of that. If you've got a server decked out with as many resources as you'd ever need, go for it. Make this as big as you want it to be. King in the castle, king in the castle. So let's go ahead and finish putting my data in memory into this data cube. All I really have to do at this point is build it. So I'm gonna to go to the storage type at the top and select in memory. Then I'm gonna check in the data cube. Once I do this, you'll see that it asks me to start building in memory. Let's say yes. Then it will ask if we wanna create a rebuilding schedule. Since I know this data isn't changing, I don't need a schedule, it's always gonna be the same. But in your case, you may wanna create one because your values could be changing over time and you may need your cubes to be rebuilt with the latest values. Now, depending on the size of the data model being built, the building actually could take a long time. So if you wanna see what's going on, go to the admin screen on the left-hand side Click System Health and then Jobs. Here you can see your job and the percentage to completion. And you can see that mine's basically finished. Now I'm gonna run over to the dashboard and let's test this out. You can see that when we use the data cube, the data returns almost instantly. So we're good to go. Now I hope you like this functionality. I know personally that this has bailed me out of a lot of projects that I've created that initially seem to have very poor performance. So it's really worth looking into. And if you want to learn a little bit more about data storage, check out a video that I did called Three Data Storage Techniques in Dundas BI. This will talk about how you can use different storage techniques to solve different BI problems. And it's well worth your time. Thanks for watching.